Oh yeah, you guys see the title, you see the thumbnail. Somehow, some way, Daniel Larson has lost his mind even worse than we've ever seen before. And I know, I know how crazy of a statement that is, considering we did about like three videos just this month on Daniel. And it seems like with each passing video, the levels of insanity have just been ramped up more and more. And it all culminates with this one today. Because I'll tell you what, I will say it right here right now. I know one of these days, and probably very soon, Daniel will have another freak out like this that most likely tops this one. But for right now... Even the situation with Bob in the car, any situation that happened back at the group home, doesn't compare to what we're going to see today. And I know I'm hyping it up a lot, but if you've already seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, well then just hold, hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen, because you have never seen Daniel Larson at this level. And so we're going to get into that and many other things that Daniel got into this week because, you know, ju just because he had the biggest, like, like freak out of all time doesn't mean that it wasn't an eventful week otherwise because his community tab has been popping off and he's released a few other videos as well that kind of detail just what kind of wacky shenanigans he's getting into this week. So with all that being said, I want to get into the video, but before we do that, I want to give a massive shout out to today's video's sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by the goats over at Aura. Did you know that tons of your personal information can be out there publicly visible on the internet right now just because data brokers are allowed to sell your info to just about anybody they want to? But that's where Aura comes in, because Aura does the hard work for you and gets down any unwanted info that may be up there online. Cleaning up this information not only helps reduce the amount of spam that I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to access my bank accounts, social media accounts, or any other sensitive information. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 73 million former and current customers had their records released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Luckily, Aura does all this for me, and they'll do it for you too. You shouldn't have to go through several different apps just because a company can't keep your data secure. And they do it all for a great price as well. If I was one of these people who were in the AT&T breach, I wouldn't worry for a second because I know that Aura is always on and always there to keep me safe online. I value my privacy, ladies and gentlemen, and I value yours as well. So you can start a two-week free trial right now by going to Aura.com slash SmokeyMCC, and it'll be down in the description and the pinned comment below as well. Nobody wants their personal info just floating around online, and when you sign up for Aura, you're taking the right steps and getting all that stuff off of there. So again, thank you to the legends at Aura for keeping us safe here online. When it comes to videos and live streams, Daniel was much more active this week than he has been in quite a long time. He made this video you're seeing on screen here where he walks around the streets of Boulder, Colorado for about 15 minutes just ranting and raving about anybody he can. And this isn't even the craziest video he did all week, but this one here gives you an insight into everything that's going on, who he currently dislikes and who he currently trusts. And spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, he dislikes many, he trusts very little, and the people that he trusts are also in the same camp as the people he dislikes. So it's this vicious circle for Daniel, where one person's cool with him one day, one person's cool with him the next day, but at the end of each day, all of them are trolls. But with all that out of the way, let's hear all the nonsense from Daniel himself. Bob won't answer his phone. I've tried texting him, he won't answer his text. He's completely ignoring me, so I've canceled all appointments because I can't do anything right now. They are, everyone that I am trying to set up appointments for, for housing, jobs, they're saying because of my disability, I need to have a rep payee. And the only person close enough to me that can become my rep payee is Bob. <laughs> you know, 
I got to apologize for the like the awful wind sounds in the background, which is going to be a constant in today's video, and there's really nothing I can do about that. Daniel decided to record all these videos on like the windiest day of the year, right next to a main road, and it's it doesn't sound the best. But I know you guys can hear what he's saying, and he's he's not happy about Bob not answering his phone calls. He's saying that the only person who can like be his uh, repayee. But, you know, Daniel Daniel seems to forget that the last time people saw him and Bob on camera together, Daniel was once again starting a fight with him while in the passenger seat of his car. I know many people who, like, just get into Daniel stuff or have, like, a little bit of a knowledge about Daniel and not that much might think I'm talking about, you know, the motel threatened to kill me incident. Uh, no, no, he's, this has happened more than once. Bob even managed to run over Daniel's foot in the last one. Now, he actually didn't run it over, but Daniel made made a big stink and made it sound like he ran over his foot just so Daniel would have some bearing to be mad at him. He always treats Bob like utter dirt and he only wants him there when he needs him there. And this is one of those times when they're telling Daniel that he needs someone to like co-sign for him. Bob's the only one who can do it so now it's time to drag Bob back into his life. Daniel needs a new apartment. Well I guess it's time to drag Bob back into his life. But when Bob's giving him genuine advice about people like Grace Vanderwall or really anything that Daniel doesn't want to hear that's when Daniel loses his mind and starts snapping on Bob and it's really it's got to be tough for Bob because despite all of us knowing that the way Daniel treats him should just should make Bob not want to be anywhere near this guy Bob still seemingly has Daniel's best interest in mind when he's around but Daniel only wants money from him to get a hotel or to get an apartment to further push these delusions about him moving in with Grace Vanderwall. I bet Bob just wants to put him into a home somewhere but knows that no one else will take him after they've seen Daniel's previous shenanigans. But again, for all we know, Bob could have cut ties with Daniel about a year ago and hasn't talked to him since and it's just a troll contacting him. Uh, Daniel does bring up though that Bob sends him like two to four hundred dollars a week and Daniel's upset about that because he wants Bob to send him all the money that Bob plans to send him this year so that he can get an apartment. Um, again, I don't know if that's the fake Bob that's just sending Daniel Larson like a weekly payment so that he can kind of keep Daniel under lock and key and have him to text all week long. These Larson trolls really are dedicated. I wouldn't be shocked to hear that. But the fact of the matter is, Bob isn't doing all he can for Daniel, and Daniel's not having it. Bob should be bending over backwards whenever Daniel needs him, and right now he ain't answering the call. It's tough, tough times in Colorado. And I also had to call probation and notify them that I am out of money. That all of my legal cases have went through my entire savings account. So, Bob is being a complete asshole at this point and I've had it with him. I had to cancel all of my housing meetings because they are asking for a rep payee and somebody I can put, like a second, third party, I guess, that I can put down on my paperwork. And Bob's the person I have to do so. And without me getting a hold of Bob, I can do shit. Because I have to have a second person on my paperwork. I know I'm an adult, but legally, they are asking for a second person. So it doesn't matter what I say, because if the company is going to hire me, those are their policies, apparently. It's fucked up. They are also demanding that I have a job. So, like, for me to be able so probation wants me to have a job. Bob wants me to have a job. So while Daniel's in the middle of discussing his troubles with finding a job and finding housing, the police decide to stroll down the street. They got their sirens on and his head snaps back real quick because you know he's heard those sirens before. And he's he's heard them a lot just in the past month alone. He's making sure every time he hears them, they ain't coming for him. So... Bob wants me to have a job. Probation wants me to have a job. Everyone wants me to have a job. Okay. And 
to go along with that, I have repeatedly put out applications for jobs, and all the jobs are asking that I, if I'm going to get hired, I have to have a rep payee, or I have to have reliable transportation. And since I don't have either or, they won't hire me. And to go along with that, I've also tried to put down information on housing. I've tried to put out applications for housing. And it's the same bullshit. They want a third party on my paperwork. And with my history, they don't want to move forward. They are, they need to learn that it's like five years in the past and I'm a completely different person now and people don't give a shit. So that may be a lot to unpack, but let me, let me try to, let me try to open the suitcase here. He says that Bob and like the probation officer, they all want him to find a job. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the reason they can't find him a job is because of his disability. Now, that, that's just not true at all. The reason that they have such a hard time finding employment for Daniel, and he even brings it up there, is because of all this stuff that's happened in the past. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, that was five years ago. They need to get over it. Now, you may be asking, well, what was five years ago? And I would ask the same thing. I don't, I, what was five years ago? Because all the terrible stuff that he's done that would probably make it tough for him to get a job has all been done in the past year, year and a half. And it, it's classic low-cal syndrome to just tell people to get over it, even if it happens very recently and that's what Daniel's telling these people to do here to the police to his like probation officer to Bob just get over it to the people trying to hire him get over it you're all just you're not understanding that Daniel's a changed man and uh, he needs a job I think the real question to ask here is what exactly does Daniel think he's going to do for work? Obviously, we've heard him in the past say that he thinks he's going to be a singer-songwriter, or maybe he's just looking to work at like a restaurant or something. No matter what, his disability is not the reason that's going to like keep them from giving him that job. What's going to keep them from giving him that job is the way that he's acted in Olive Garden, is the way that he's acted at every establishment that he's dined and dashed from, freaked out inside of. So nobody is going to want to take the risk on hiring Daniel no matter who they are. Maybe one of the places Daniel could go to get a job is somewhere like like the dump. And I say that not as a joke, but genuinely like if Daniel needs a job, the dump is somewhere where he will be away from society, not be freaking out at anything or anyone, and he can kind of just sift around and, and move like, you know, the the waste from here to there. I know this sounds like I'm just messing with you, but if you were to ask me where someone like Daniel Larson would probably thrive and make a decent little chunk of change working at, it would probably be like a dump where he's not around nobody else. And, you know, by the end of the month, I tell you this, by the end of the first month, he'd probably have enough of a chunk of change to buy himself maybe an hour or two of recording studio time, maybe enough to rent an apartment. Who knows, but it's better than doing what he's doing right now. But I don't even think the people over there would touch Daniel. And it's just because of the way he acts. And honestly, you're telling me he's not going to constantly just call into work and be like, guys, Grace Vanderwall said I need to meet her here today at this time. I'm not going to be able to get to work, guys. Like, he's, he's going to immediately just jeopardize whatever job he's at by not showing up or just being Daniel Larson there like god forbid he gets a call from Clark while he's on the clock he will lose his mind um and and that's just how it is so I can't blame any of these establishments from not wanting to hire him but if it's court mandated they're they're gonna try to find a place and I don't know where it's gonna be but if he does find a job it'll, it'll be interesting to see Daniel Larson joining the working class And to go along with that, I have to have like a, I have to show my bank statements and I have to have at least, which is kind of fucked up, I have to have at least $10,000 to rent. I have to have this month's payment, last month's payment, and that's minimum. Like that is the bare minimum that even low income housing will do. So I better have a savings account and I better have enough money for not just first and last month's rent, food and emergency. Otherwise, these housing services will not 
of approve, which basically means I should have like realistically like 50,000 in my bank. Jesus Christ, he needs $50,000 a month. That's to cover apartments, emergencies, food. Um, okay, so let's go down the list here. Um, so apparently he needs, I'm going to assume like 20000 maybe 30000 plus for the apartment. I don't know how much he thinks apartments cost. Um, I assume he just wants a big lavish one, one to kind of impress Grace when she waltzes up in there. Uh, the other one is food. We all know Daniel Larson. He spares no expense when it comes to getting some good grub. And good grub to him is like kind of anything that the Cheesecake Factory sells, as long as it doesn't involve meat. He likes eating things like bowls of strawberries or bowls of spaghetti. And he's always buying it from a place where it's not done right but it's really expensive and i don't understand why he does that when he's usually scrounging for money day in and day out but that's just how daniel does it and apparently uh it might cost like five to ten grand a month and i'm assuming that that other like ten thousand left over is just for emergencies you know if daniel needs to hire some extra security guards or needs to book a flight over to see grace these are just things that daniel needs to do but really though, $50,000, like he genuinely thinks he's supposed to be given 50k for what? I think he he just assumes Bob's going to deposit it in there and Bob's sitting on a lot of money for him. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what the trolls are telling him, that Bob's using all of Daniel's like like residuals and music revenue to kickstart Bob's own music career, which is just hilarious when you think about old man Bob trying to get into the music game to spite Daniel Larson. But he believes he's worth a lot of money, old Daniel. So, Bob is, like I said, ignoring me, and I can't move forward with anything. And everyone is just in the fucking group chat just harassing me at this point because this is all fucked. So, good job, motherfucker Bob. You fucked up enough that you pretty much destroyed my life. I don't know why he would give me $4,000 on average a month and just not even pay for housing. And he gives me like 100 to 200 a week. Or I mean 100 to 200 a day and then tells me to get a hotel room, tells me what to spend it on. And then Bob has also told me I might as well sue him. fucking ridiculous. And then he just decides to cut ties and say that all I care about is his money. That ain't true at all. And if he believes that, he could go fuck himself. I don't care about his money. I care about just a fucking place to live. And if he thinks otherwise, he's a fucking moron. So that's that part that I really wanted you guys to hear. He says that Bob sends him one to 200 a day and tells him to get a hotel room with that money. If that's true, uh, like I said, I don't know if that's some troll playing Bob, but if they're actually sending Daniel money on a daily basis, I highly doubt it is, and it's probably the real Bob. But it's also Daniel Larson saying this. You can't believe everything he can't believe everything this guy says. However, let's go off the logic that Bob really is sending him like one to two hundred dollars a day, and then like four thousand a month in total. Maybe is that that what Daniel was saying? there well bob's clearly telling him hey here's like 150 bucks get yourself a hotel room at like the motel six or somewhere where it's like 50 to 60 bucks a night the rest of the money's yours get some food or whatever and daniel's annoyed that bob's telling him what to do with it and then he goes on to say that he doesn't care about bob's money he just cares about a place to stay well, Bob is giving him money for a place to stay every night, according to Daniel, but that's still not enough for him. And I mentioned it in the beginning. All he does care about when it comes to Bob is the money, because Bob's the only one who can, like, you know, be the, the payee, the referee, or whatever the fuck he said earlier. <laughs> but Bob's the, also the only one who can give him money, and that's why he's acting this way. He's always, like, being like, Bob, don't tell me what to do with this money that you are giving me to keep a roof over my head, you know? <laughs> like, Daniel doesn't want to hear that. Maybe the trolls are just taking this money out of Daniel's bank account before he even notices. Now, that's just a theory, but that's because Daniel's always 
always talking about that his bank account just magically goes into the red. However, that could be because he buys a bunch of stuff and has a bunch of debt. Nonetheless, if Bob really is giving him that amount of money every single day, Daniel could just save it and then two weeks later he could have enough to put down like a payment on a first apartment. <laughs> and it's that easy, but Daniel, it's never going to work out like that for him. He wants to be given like four to 5000 right now so that he can run, get an apartment, and then have enough to kind of like flaunt to grace. I don't know, man. He just wants the money that he thinks he's owed for his music career when he's never really made much of a dime off it anyway. It's also now to a point that the feds are even like investigating him, and I'm on the FBI watch list just because I don't have housing. Now that is fucking stupid. I'm homeless and the FBI is threatening me over my homelessness. So they could go fuck their lives. And yes, I just said that. And then they also want to say that, oh, you need security. Get security. You need housing. Go get housing. Well, you know what? Stop threatening to press charges on me if I don't. Because that's just making my family more angry. And at this point, I don't care. Go ahead and press federal charges. My fans will send death threats to the FBI till the day they die. I'm sorry, what? Like, like, where did that come from? Firstly, no, they will not. Nobody will do that. And the only person who's down with that is Daniel Larson himself, and he feels like it's because he's been slighted by the government. Here's the thing. He's really upset because he's saying that he's been put on a watch list. And I don't know if that's like, I don't know if that's 100% confirmed, but if it is, this is nobody's fault but Daniel's. Listen to the things that he's saying in this video right here. This alone is enough to get somebody put on a watch list. And then you might think to yourself, wait a minute, wasn't this guy just in jail three times this month? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. He got out, he made this video, and a video you're about to see in a little bit here, where he makes death threats all over the place, threatening every single person he can. Members of government, police members, uh, Clark, Daniel, McDougal, random people. But that's, <laughs> this is, this is just another day in the life for him. I don't understand how they don't just pick him up off the street, because if you're yelling some of the stuff he's yelling, you'd think you'd need to just get put right into somewhere where you can get a mental evaluation. We all know Daniel's not there, and I do say that a lot, but it's moments like this where he says that his fans are going to do that to the FBI that show just how out of it this guy is. He wants people to do things that are completely illegal and wrong, but he wants them to do it for him so he doesn't have to do it himself and get in trouble. That's, that's, he knows, he knows that this stuff is wrong, but he still wants people to do it, and that's what's scary about old Daniel. And no, I did not send a death threat. Because I said that my fans will. And I'm not responsible for my fans. If my fans want to send death threats to the FBI, that's on them, not me. Because I'm not in charge of what my fans do. And to go along with that, if the FBI really thinks I'm a threat, they need to really look at what's really going on. And the stuff I keep talking about with my fans trying to assault me in public. And then they don't give a shit, and the police don't give a shit. Hmm. Then there's something wrong with our fucking government. I'm about to call the World Protection Agency and I'm about to call the uh, the false incriminated or whatever and see if I could get free money at this point whatever the fuck they call that place for false uh, for people that have been imprisoned under false charges I'm gonna see if I can get free money now. 
I mean, yeah, you heard it at the beginning of that clip right there. He's saying that he can't be responsible because he's going to send all of his fans to go do this. You know, I don't know who Daniel thinks he's going to send, but we all know he believes he has this like worldwide fan base that's just willing to live and die for him. Uh, but, but he's going to be sadly mistaken when he figures out that's not true. And then he says he was falsely imprisoned and he's going to go to the place where they give you money, free money that is, for being falsely imprisoned. Pretty sure Tony Chase would like to know where that place is too, but I don't, I don't think Daniel's going to find it. And also, my fans don't even realize how much money I actually make. Just stop saying I'm broke, because I'm, I'm clearly not broke, because I would have died a long time ago. And then also, why is Jacob Vanderwall sending me texts of him having conversations with Bob? Even Jacob Vanderwall saying to Bob in text messages that I've seen with my own fucking eyes at this point, which proves Bob is lying. The text messages from Jacob Vanderwall to Bob have said, why are you betraying Daniel? That's not okay. And Bob is saying, I don't give a fuck about this fucker. What have I done to Bob? What the fuck have I done to Bob to get him to be angry? Just because he didn't believe that I was in contact with Jacob Vanderwall to begin with, and then says that Jacob Vanderwall is threatening him? None of this makes sense, and Bob is a liar. And Bob is trying to make me look crazy, I found out. I have text to prove. I have literal text, which I could show in court, that prove that Bob is in contact and that Bob has lied. So... At this point, I don't give a shit what Bob says because I know that he's a liar and I know he's trying to make money off of me. And Bob is also trying to silence me, which isn't cool. So, yeah, at this point with what's going on with Bob and how he's not like, there's too much evidence that I have proving that like I should already have an apartment. Well, actually I shouldn't even have an apartment. I could actually have a house with the money that he was giving me. And then he just leaves leaves me hanging, which I do realize it's not Bob's job to give me the money. I realize that. But it makes no sense why he wouldn't just give me one month's rent. It makes no fucking sense. And then I get arrested on my cases that are already false just because like, I can't hire a good enough fucking lawyer. So I'm sitting there pleading guilty to everything. Which only hurts my reputation. And Bob is living in a goddamn mansion. Like, no fucking joke. Bob lives in a mansion. And he doesn't even give two fucking shits about me. Bomb you! Bomb you! Bomb you! Oh dear lord, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the freak out happens. Now here's the thing. There are only going to be bits and pieces of this that I can show you. Now, well, that's not entirely true. I can show you the whole thing, but I can't put the audio in for a lot of this. Because 
It may seem pretty crazy, but for a 3 minute and 40 second stretch, Daniel Larson does nothing but utter death threats word after word after word, as you just heard for a little bit right there. He cannot help himself. The things that he says in just this 3 minutes alone should be enough to get you put on a watch list for the rest of your natural life. And for that alone, as I said, I can't show all of this, but if you want to see this clip, it's been circulating around online like crazy. You can find it over on my Twitter page at SmokeyMCC, but don't get it twisted. We're going to go through this, and I'm going to tell you what he's saying as we go along. But, my God, I, I've never seen him this upset, and still to this day, you know, it's happened. this happened about a week ago. I'm not sure what set him off this bad. Obviously, it was the trolls messing with him just a little too much, and it pushed him to this point where he has just lost his mind more than we've ever seen it before. But honestly, I feel like it has to be something more than that, because the trolls have messed with him plenty of times before. Especially when Grace Vanderwall gets under his skin, you see Daniel lose it. So I'm not sure if that's what happened here, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't mention Grace's name once, so I don't know. I don't know. I will tell you who he is mad at, though. And he's <laughs> he's really, really mad at them. I mean, matter of fact, you just heard him say it a few minutes ago. It's the government. It's the police. It's the FBI. The threats that Daniel makes to the Colorado police, to the police all over the world, again, is something that just is shocking to me that he's not in jail for right now. I know I'll get people in the comments telling me the legality of these things and everything, but look, he just got out of jail for the third time this month, and it took him a few days to make a video like this where he's given everyone he can death threats, looking as unhinged as we've ever seen him before. I don't know, man. I would not feel safe knowing this guy's on the street, but he is on the street. And so again, we just got to put up with it. But I ask you this. Imagine you're someone just walking down the street in Colorado. You look to your left and on the other side of the road, this is what you see. You got Daniel Larson constantly screaming into the camera more rapidly than we've ever seen before. Snot is pouring down his nose, and he is just screaming. He's telling every single person that he can think of that he will off them. Now, again, these are just straight-up death threats. He gets very mad when he thinks people are like delivering death threats to Grace Vanderwall or all these other people. That's never happening, although he's being told it's happening. But he thinks it's okay to just dole out death threats to whoever he sees fit that day. The cops didn't do what he wanted, so he's gonna start saying this crazy shit about them? I don't know, man. This is this is just unbelievable. I can never imagine. I can never imagine saying this type of stuff, let alone <laughs> recording it, then putting it online to kind of be like, hey, I'm gonna stick it to him. But that's exactly what Daniel thinks he did in this video. He stuck it to the cops, to the government, to Bob, and they all know now that they messed up. And why? Because Daniel's losing his mind. It's another case of him thinking that other people are feeling the consequences for the things that he does to himself. But you see, I think I cracked the code, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel Larson recently had started putting up pictures that he's been eating chicken wings and like, uh, what's it called? Chicken Alfredo. And he's not one to be known to eat meat. Now, I don't know why that is, but I think it's messing with his mind and his mind's just begging for more vegetables. I mean, listen to this. Kill, 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 kill. It's like he can't possibly get enough kale, and it's, he's, he's going off about it. But I'm not joking with you, ladies and gentlemen. The entire duration of this video is just him saying the word kill or bomb. Like, he, he's just, like, so enraged that all he can think about is, like, destruction and just really, just really bad shit. And when it, when it comes to the forefront of his mind like this, he doesn't know how to, like, articulate what he's feeling into words, so he, like, can only say that one word over and over and over again. This is a message to everybody, please. It's a girl. And now he's making it known that this is directed to every police officer in the world. I mean, guys, have you ever seen him more rabid than this? I, I haven't. I really haven't. I've covered this dude for like a year and a half now, maybe even closer to two years, and I've never seen him get like this. There was that time he beat up his cell phone next to that like random brick building somewhere in Colorado last summer. Uh, we also know about the time he was in like that bodega up in New York and freaked out there. Um, that he's done this a lot of places, but never to this level. And it's just showing that his mental health is getting increasingly worse and worse. And it's only going to continue to get worse until he's put somewhere where he can get, like, the proper mental health help. And, look, here's the deal. 
if he's not in jail, the trolls are never going to stop messing with him. And that's what I've kind of realized over the past few months, is that the reason Daniel, I at least think, needs to be in jail so much is because if he's out, if he's able to just have his phone and do whatever, this is going to keep happening. The trolls aren't going to stop. You bet your ass they're not. No trolling of any locales have ever stopped just because people were like, eh, it's gotten old now. When one group stops, another group comes in. And that's the way it's seemingly always been for guys like Chris Chan, for guys like Cyrax. It always gets new people involved and it always ramps up the trolling. The people now have Daniel believing that like Jacob Sartorius is with Grace Vanderwall and that she's like, someday she's pregnant, someday she's not. Daniel himself is just constantly getting berated by fake Bob and different fake people that, <laughs> that he thinks he can trust, like Tina Vanderwall and all that. And it's messing with his head and it's not gonna stop. Like I could sit here right now and tell people, yo, you guys gotta stop this. And people would just look at me and scoff. No matter who you are or what you say about this Daniel Larson situation, trolling of these guys is never something that you're gonna be able to stop once it starts. Because people know what Daniel's done in his past, especially the predatory shit, and it never flies. So I guess the moral of the story is... I don't know what's going to happen with Daniel Larson next, and I say that in every video because he's such a wild card and who knows what type of crazy situation he's going to get into this week, but when he's in jail, he's obviously just counting the days till he can get out and talk to that fake Grace Vanderwall again, but then he's out of jail and the fake Grace Vanderwall messes with him and makes him go off like this. Now again, I don't think this was Grace Grace's doing or even fake Grace's doing, but we have seen him before lose his mind over Grace. Race. And all these trolls have such a big, like, impact on Daniel's head that the only way this is ever going to stop is if he's in jail. And it's it's just going to be a really weird ride to see as we go along. The Daniel Larson story is just beginning, too. He's only, like, 25 years old, you know? He's not like Chris Chan, who's 40, 42 years. Like, 41, 42? How old is Chris now? Nonetheless, a Chris's trolling is going to go to the end of time, too. But you see him now being a much more, like, much more away from the internet, Chris. He goes live maybe once or twice every every month and maybe puts up a tweet here and there. Daniel is constantly on, constantly constantly doing stuff and people have access to him 24 7 and it's created what we see now and it's a weird weird creation and it's only going to get worse over time but in saying all this i just wanted to show you guys the crazy week daniel had and i apologize again for not being able to show that video but honestly i not that much not that much like the video was a mess of wind sounds and daniel screaming slurs and everything like that but again it's over on my twitter at smoky mcc if you want to go see it there it is just one of the most wild videos i've ever seen and i think just by seeing it on screen you guys were able to gauge that but with all that being said, I am going to get out of here. Thank you guys, as always, for sticking by and enjoying the videos, if you did enjoy it. And until next time, I'm out of here. And thank you again to today's sponsor, Aura. Remember to use code SMOKYMCC at checkout to get a two-week free trial. The link is in the description and the pinned comment below. With all that being said, have a safe week, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next one.